Now, have you ever asked yourself why you can't seem to remember anything you've read from your books? Or ever wondered why some people seem to have a photographic memory of everything they read? Now I've asked that question to myself, and that's when I discovered the technique that helps me memorize everything I read in medical school, and it's something called the Memory Palace. Hey friends, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Carl, and I'm a doctor and a lecturer at Top Notch Medical Board Prep, and on this channel, I help students like you with your medical school journey by sharing study tips and productivity tricks. If that's something you vibe with, please consider subscribing to this channel. So in this video, I'll be talking about what I learned in this book entitled Moonwalk with Einstein by Joshua Forward and it's about the memory palace or the method of loci which I used as a memorization technique when I was in medical school at West Visayas State University where I actually ended up graduating first in our class and I attribute most of that to this memorization technique. Now everything I'm gonna mention will be linked in the time codes in the video description below if you feel like skipping into the other parts of the video. So let's jump into it. Okay so a memory palace is just a way of organizing the storage of memory in your brain and it involves two stages. Stage Stage one is to transform information into an image. Stage two is to place that image onto a memory of a physical location. Now that location should be something that you know very well, like your childhood home for example. Now it's important to note that I only use this method for concepts that don't work well with flashcards or concepts that are not intuitive. Now one example is trying to memorize the long list of drugs that increase the activity of the cytochrome P450. So basically it just depends on what kind of information you are learning. For example, to memorize the adverse effects of such as hirsutism, enlarged gums, nystagmus, and teratogenicity, I will first find the word that sounds like phenytoin. So for me, phenytoin, phenytoin, phineas. So I would like to choose Phineas from the Disney TV series Phineas and Ferb. I will imagine and see in my mind's eye Phineas with a thick mustache, big gums with saliva drooling from the side of his mouth, and some of his facial features are bizarre because it's teratogenic, and his eyes are dancing weirdly because it's nystagmus. So I imagine myself touching his mustache, looking at his big gums sticking out of his mouth, and feeling and looking surprised because of the teratogenic effects. But that's how I do it. I give it life color and detail and just imagine how it would be like for my senses if it were really truly happening in real life. Now this is the reason why the resource Sketchy Medical is so useful because they use funny and ridiculous cartoon sketches. However, I don't use Sketchy Medical mainly because the mnemonics are not personal to me and I'm not saying you shouldn't. They don't resonate with my personal experiences so I think that's one strong argument against my use of it. But of course, this is not the only study or memorization technique you need to get through medical school for intuitive information or for those that can be learn through the use of flashcards, we have to use active recall and other evidence-based study techniques. If you want to find out more about other study techniques that can improve your learning, check out this video link over here. That will be my video on my top three study techniques to help you survive medical school. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye!